Welcome to another episode of IGCSE Biology Revision. Today we're going to be covering section 5 of the syllabus, enzymes. Now there are a couple of things that you need to know about these things. And uh, firstly, they are proteins that act as biological catalysts. Now a catalyst is something that increases the rate of a chemical reaction without being changed by the reaction itself. And uh, enzymes are essential to keep chemical reactions in our bodies fast enough for survival. And without them, reactions would occur so slowly uh, for us to be even alive. Now you need to know how an enzyme works. So I've got this diagram here where uh, we've got this enzyme and you can notice that there is a region in the enzyme that allows a molecule to fit in it. And we've got three different types of molecules and you can see that there is only one molecule that, it, that can actually fit inside the enzyme. Now this is to show you how specific enzymes are. Enzymes have a region where it can only fit one type of molecule and that depends on the shape. Now we can see that uh, clearly molecule 2 will be able and will be the only one able to fit in this enzyme. And so we call we call that complementary um, complementary com, we'll, we call that a complementary shape. So we'd say that um, the shape of the molecule molecule two is complementary to the enzyme. Okay. Um, now what happens is that this molecule here kind of fits into this region, and uh, forms this combination here between the enzyme and the molecule, and the enzyme kind of uses energy to tweak it a bit, and um, if stresses the molecules into breaking it apart into two molecules A and B. So essentially this enzyme in this example is catalyzing the reaction going from uh, one chunk of molecule 2 uh, into two different parts into molecule A and B. Um, and that's not to say that an enzyme can only be used to break apart things, it can easily uh, reverse things into um, going from A and B to combine it into molecule 2 again. But um, this is the example we're using today. Now. Um, you get the general idea and if you are a uh, core curriculum student then this is pretty much all you need to know. However, if you are undertaking the extended curriculum then you need to know a bit more than that. First of all, you need to know what this uh, region here that allows a molecule to bind to. Okay, So this molecule binding region is called the active site. And um, the molecule, in this case molecule 2, uh, uh, is is what the enzyme acts on, and we call that uh, that the substrate, which is uh, defined as any molecule that um, interacts with an enzyme. Now, when the substrate kind of enters the active site and uh, forms this here, we call that the enzyme substrate complex, which is uh, pretty much literally a, a complex formed between an enzyme and a substrate. And um, at the very end, when we get uh, the products of the reaction, in this case A and B, we simply call that the products. Okay, so the enzyme is um, kind of catalyzing the reaction um, going from substrate, which is molecule 2, into the products, molecule A and molecule B, <coughs> and so forth. Okay, so n nothing too difficult here. Now, you also need to know the effect of temperatures and pH on enzyme activity. Now, I've got this, um, got these two graphs here, and I know things might look complicated here, but we're just going to go through it step by step so it becomes quite simple. So we've got, uh, on the y-axis we've got enzyme activity, on the x-axis we've got temperature. And you can see that uh, from uh, from temperature 0 to 40, uh, it goes up, 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 and it reaches a um, reaches the highest point of the graph and it kind of goes back down again past the temperature of 40. Now, uh, the temperature at which the enzyme works best at is uh, called the optimum temperature, and in this case, it's 40 degrees. Just know that every enzyme is different, and this is just one generalized example. So most, a lot of the enzymes in our body will have an optimum temperature of around 40, but that doesn't mean to say um, every enzyme is like that. Some enzymes can work very well in very high temperatures and not kind of fall off like this, but we'll, we'll take a look at that later. So I'll just explain to you why it increases, why it starts off very low, for example. Okay, so the reason why at very low temperatures the enzyme activity activity is really low is because at low temperatures molecules move really really slowly because they don't have uh, that much kinetic energy. That means uh, for a reaction to occur, uh, there needs to be a collision between two molecules. Now at very low um, kinetic energies, at low speeds of molecules, uh, that collision isn't very likely um, and hap it happens. Um, less frequently and that's why that at low temperatures uh, there's not that much enzyme activity but as you go up uh, molecules start to speed up speed up and um, it reaches uh, when it reaches a temperature of around 40 this is when the uh, the enzyme works best 
Now, when you raise the temperature further than 40 degrees, um, the enzyme activity starts to starts to decrease. And um, at high temperatures, bonds inside the enzyme become broken. And now this causes uh, the shape of the active site to change. Okay, so we talked about the importance of complementary um, shapes. So um, because enzyme um, because this enzyme has an active site that only fits substrate, uh, which is molecule two, uh, when the active site kind of loses its shape, um, the enzyme substrate won't uh, complex won't be able to form, and the products won't form either. So that is why at uh, very high degrees, um, enzyme activity becomes uh, and falls to zero, and we call that denaturation. Um, which is uh, pretty much just the change in shape of an active site due to uh, uh, due to breakage of chemical bonds uh, inside the enzyme. Now, similarly, in uh, in pH, uh, in in this example here, pH of seven is usually the optimum uh, pH of an enzyme, and when you go higher than that or lower than that, uh, bonds start to become broken in the enzyme, uh, eventually le leading to the change on, uh, in shape of the active site. And um, once again, the substrate cannot fit and um, uh, denaturation occurs. Now, every enzyme is different. Now, some enzymes have optimum pHs of like two. Okay, This means they can survive in really, really acidic conditions. Okay, And um, they do this without becoming denatured. Some enzymes work in really high temperatures and their resistance to denaturing in um, really high degrees. So, like, it really all just depends on uh, the optimum uh, temperature or pH of that particular enzyme. So, if you go too, if you deviate too much from that optimum value, then what happens will eventually just be denaturation. So, even Enzymes that work really high, uh, really well in high temperatures. If you increase the temperature one step, two step, three step, uh, um, more than that, then eventually bonds will become broken because enzymes are susceptible to that. So uh, once again, thank you for watching, and um, I'll see you next episode.